on. Bear with one moment. I've just been a bit silly on Instagram. Oh dear. Silly Natasha. Hang on. My brain is not working this morning. Right. Hello. Nice to see you. Hope everyone is well. It is cardigan weather today. I think definitely cardi weather. Right. Are you ready for some really fun stories this morning? I hope so. And before that, just to remind you, what do I need to tell you this week? Hmm, what do I need to tell you? Lots of things, really. Creative Writing Club is back today after a week off last week. Kind of suitable from age, I'd say six plus. Um, it's good fun. I encourage lots of drawing and doodling. There's lots of chatter, so it's not... Um, don't expect your, your child to come away kind of written Moby Dick or anything, but it's just a really fun way of getting them to express themselves without um, worrying too much about grammar and punctuation and all of that malarkey. And I know it's important with my teacher hat on, but um, I just want them to have a fun time, really. So that's on again from this afternoon. If you want to know anything about it, then message me and I can send you over the Zoom, Zoom, Zoom link for that. And also next week we have got an author event going on with Kate Wiseman. She writes middle grade books. The books are really cool. They're all about going to a gangster school and the kids learn how to pick locks and do naughty things. Um, and Kate is a ball of energy. So I'm really excited about that. Again, free event. So you just pop onto Facebook Live next week. I can't remember the date. That's terrible. But have a look and um, you can find out all about that as well. So get involved. Schools, that's for you too. It doesn't have to just be individuals. Okay, I think we will start with some stories. I'm going to start with Alan's Big Scary Teeth. There it is. It's by Jarvis. Um, and it is published by, oh, Walker Books. It wasn't hard for me to find. It's got it right on the spine. There you go. Um, this book is available as a wall book like this. It's also available as a picture flat. And so it's up to you, depends what you fancy, or you can just listen to me. Okay, are you ready? <clears throat> Alan came from a long line of very scary alligators. He was known throughout the jungle for his scaring. It was what he did best. He's very pleased with himself, doesn't he? Alan would start each day polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing each of his big, scary teeth for at least 10 minutes at a time. And after practicing his frightening faces in the mirror, he'd sneak into the jungle for his morning round of scaring and went snap, 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 and grr, 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 grr. He said things like, I'm big, scary, and fear my razor-sharp teeth. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads. The monkeys tumble from the trees and the parrots screech in terrible terror. Snap, snap! Grrr! <laughs> I love being scary, laughed Alan. After a long day of scaring of the jungle animals, Alan would head back home to the swamp, relax, finish the crossword in the Jungle Times, and take out his false teeth. Mm. Nobody knew about Alan's false teeth. Good night, teeth. Sweet dreams, my shoe snappers, Alan would say, as he put them away carefully in his super secret hiding place. <laughs> One morning, Barry the beaver was up early collecting wood and came across a dozing Alan. Terrified that Alan might wake up and gobble him whole, he quickly dived behind a bush. <laughs> Whew, that was close, thought Barry, just as a set of false teeth fell out of a bush with a familiar slap slap. <laughs> when Alan awoke, his teeth were gone. More teeth, more teeth, where are my teeth? What could he do? Maybe no one would notice. Could he still be scary without them? He decided to head into the jungle 
as usual. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads, the monkeys tumble from the trees, and the parrots screech with laughter. Alan just wasn't very scary without his teeth. Snap, snap, roar! <laughs> Alan slunk back to the swamp. He had never been more embarrassed. He came from a long line of very scary alligators. Scaring was all he had ever known. What would Alan do now? Poor Alan began to cry. Just a bit at first. But then the tears kept coming. He howled and yowled more than all the jungle babies put together and he could not stop crying until next morning all the animals turned up at Alan's swamp with his big scary teeth. We'll give you back your teeth, said Frog. Really? said Alan. On one condition, said Parrot, you have to stop scaring us. What will I do? I don't know how to do anything else. We have an idea, said Frog. And so every day, after polishing his scales, sharpening his nails and brushing his big scary teeth, Alan headed into the jungle and became Alan the gardener, Alan the hairdresser, Snappy Cuts, and Alan the dentist. But every night he became Alan the big scary storyteller, thrilling the jungle animals with his terrifying tales. <laughs> I love being scary, laughed Alan. And sometimes he even let Barry borrow his teeth. <laughs> it, just, oh, it just tickles me. I love the idea of an alligator or a crocodile having false teeth. Brilliant. Okay, next one. This is called What Should We Do With The Boo Hoo Baby? And it's by Cressida Cow and Ingrid Golden, and it is published by Macmillan Books. There it is. Again, this is a board book version, but you can get it as a picture pack as well. The baby said, <laughs> Quack, said the duck. What shall we do with the boohoo baby? Feed him, said the dog. So they fed the baby. Meow, said the cat. Bow wow, said the dog. Quack, said the duck. Moo, said the cow. And... <gasps> said the baby. What should we do with the boohoo baby? Bathe him, said the cat. So they bathed the baby. Meow, said the cat. Bow wow, said the dog. Said the duck. Moo, said the cow. Moo, <gasps> said the baby. What shall we do with the boohoo baby? Play with him, said the cow. So they played with the baby. Meow, said the cat. Bow wow, said the dog. Quack, said the duck. Moo, said the cow. And moo, <gasps> said the baby. What shall we do with the boohoo baby? Put him to bed, said the duck. So they put him to bed. Meow, said the cat. Bow wow, said the dog. Quack, said the duck. Moo, said the cow. And... <sighs> said the baby. He's just tired. I know how he feels. Oh, right. Next one. This is Square by Mac Barnett and John Classen. A genius team, I think. Also published by Walker Books. Their books are a bit crazy. I like crazy. This is Square. This is Square's secret cave. Every day, Square goes down into his cave and takes a block below the ground. He pushes the block up out of the cave. He brings the block to the pile at the top of the hill. This 
this is his work. One day, while Square was doing his work, Circle floated by. Square, said Circle, you are a genius. I did not know you were a sculptor. Oh, yes, said Square. What is a sculptor? A sculptor shapes blocks into art, said Circle. Oh, yes, said Circle. I see what you mean. But he did not really see what she meant. Sorry, Instagram's being a bit flaky this morning if you're joining in. It's flicking in and out. This is a wonderful sculpture, said Circle. It looks just like you. Square looked at his block. Yes, I suppose it is wonderful. Now, said Circle, you must do one of me. Oh, said Square. I will come back for it tomorrow. Goodbye, genius. Circle, said Square, I think I should tell you something. But she was already gone. Oh, dear, 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 said Square. He studied the block. I have to make this block look like Circle, he said. Circle is perfect, so I must make this perfect. Square got to work shaping the block. Oh, crumbs, said the square. This is not perfect. Oh, dirt, said square. This is much worse. He went back to work. He worked and worked and worked and worked. Ah, cried square. He had carved the whole block away. There was nothing left. He was surrounded by rubble. Whatever is the opposite of perfect, that is what this is. I must stay up all night and figure this out. Square fell asleep. The next morning, Square woke up wet. He despaired. Oh, what have I done? I push blocks, I do not shape them. I'm not a genius. Hello, genius, said Circle. I'm early. Oh, dear, whispered Square. Are you finished? asked Circle. Oh, yes, said Square. I'm finished. Circle peered down. Oh, my, she said. It was beautiful. It was beguiling. <gasps> it's perfect, said Circle. It is? asked Square. Yes said Circle. You are a genius, said Circle. <laughs> okay. Morning on Instagram. Instagram's being a bit flaky this morning, so I'm sorry if it stops, it will start again. It's just, I don't know. It's being naughty. Right, next story is by the genius, and I'm not exaggerating this, but it is Sarah McIntyre. She's a writer and an illustrator. This is Grumpy Horn. Look at that for shiny. I mean, really. Could you get prettier? Published by Scholastic. Colours are just glorious. Who could not get cheered up by looking at Sarah McIntyre's artwork? Beautiful. Unicorn was sitting in his special writing house. I'm going to write the most fabulous story in the world, he thought. This made him feel very pleased with himself. He already liked being a writer. But Unicorn didn't know where to begin his story. I need my special fluffy pen, he said. He went and got his special fluffy pen. But he didn't know what to write. I need a cup of my special moonberry tea, he said. Then I'll be able to write my story. He went and made himself a cup of his special moonberry tea. And Unicorn sat at his desk wondering what to write in his special fancy notebook. He sighed. Oh, I wish I had an idea that would come knocking at my door. But Narwhal knocked instead. What are you doing, Unicorn? I'm busy writing the most fabulous story in the world, said Unicorn. Wow, said Narwhal. Can I be in your story? Don't be silly, said Unicorn. No one wants to read a story about a Narwhal. Narwhals are very boring. There will be no narwhals in my story. Oh, said Narwhal. He swam sadly away. Mermaid, guess what, said Narwhal. Unicorn is writing the most fabulous story in the world. Mermaid looked impressed. She swam off to visit Unicorn. Hello, Unicorn, 
she said. How was your story coming along? Very badly, said Unicorn. I'm waiting for my moment of genius. And I do not have any cookies. My genius ideas will only come to me if I can get some cookies to eat. Mermaid had an idea. If I bake you cookies, can I be in your story? Unicorn thought for a moment. Hmm, maybe, but only if the cookies make me feel inspired. Mermaid swam back to her submarine to bake her famous starfish cookies. Narwhal helped. He loved licking the bowl. Mermaid brought the cookies to Unicorn. Oh, look at those. Oh, now can I be in your story? Unicorn took a bite of cookie and looked thoughtful. Mm. He ate the whole plate of cookies and kept looking thoughtful. Mm. No, said Unicorn. I'm afraid you can't be in my story. They were very good cookies, but they did not inspire me. Mermaid swam off in a huff. What's wrong, Mermaid? asked Jellyfish. Unicorn is writing the most fabulous story in the world, she sniffed. But he won't let me be in it. My cookies were not inspiring enough. Maybe I'm in it, said Jellyfish. Everyone loves Jellyfish. She wriggled with excitement and swam off to visit Unicorn. Hello, Unicorn, said Jellyfish. Have you finished your fabulous story yet? I can't wait to read it and the Jellyfish in it. Why don't you let me be in your story? I'll be the most brave Jellyfish and go into space and discover fantastic alien Jellyfish. And no! howled Unicorn. I can't get any ideas because everyone keeps bothering me. You are all very silly and annoying and I don't want to write this story anymore. Oh, what a grumpy corn, said Jellyfish. Unicorn threw his fluffy pen and his notebook and his teacup into the sea. They sank down and down and drifted on the ocean currents until... Oh, look, said Mermaid. It's the most fabulous story in the world. Yippee! Let's read it, said Narwhal. The friends gathered around to read Unicorn's story. But Unicorn had not written a single word. Oh, poor Unicorn, said Mermaid. I wish we could help. I have an idea, said Narwhal. Once upon a time, a Unicorn tried to write the most fabulous story in the world. He was visited by a world-famous baker, said Mermaid. And the bravest jellyfish in the ocean, said Jellyfish. And the cleverest narwhal in the whole universe, agreed Narwhal. A few hours later, the unicorn arrived carrying a big black box. I tried to write a fabulous story, he said. But I was not very fabulous friend. But I am fabulous at ordering pizza. I brought this to say I'm sorry. Oh, that looks like a very inspiring pizza, said Narwhal. And you are just in time to help us finish the most amazing, clever, fabulous and funny story in the world. <laughs> Fab story. Do we love Sarah McIntyre? Okay, what do we have next? This one. So this is called The Shark in the Dark. And there are a few stories called The Shark in the Dark, but this one is by Peter Bentley and Ben Court. There it is. Published by Macmillan. Ooh, look at those teeth. Shark in the Dark. Down at the bottom of the deep, dark sea, something is stirring and it wants its teeth. His teeth are like knives and his eyes small and beady. He's big and he's mean and he's terribly greedy. Watch out little fishes, watch out for the shark. Watch out for the great hungry shark in the dark. There he is. The flounders were floundering. Here comes the shark! The turtles were terrified. Here comes the shark! Oh help, moaned the mackerel. The shark's on his way. We don't want to be in his belly today. And all of the fishes were flustered and bumbling. Here comes the shark and his tummy is rumbling. Now fish, smiled the shark. It's been ages since lunch. I just want a wee fishy something to munch. Just the tiniest, tastiest, 
suspicious snack. So please, grinned the shark in the dark. Hey, come back! No way, cried the crabs. We don't mean to sound selfish, but inside a shark is no place for shellfish. That's right, cried the cod. We don't want to be tea. Please go back, Mr. Shark, to the dark of the sea. Oh, I will, sneered the shark, when I've had a few shoals for my tea, or fresh lobsters, perhaps, or some soles. And he opened his jaws, and his laughter was manic, and put all the fish in a terrible panic. Away swam the fish, all desperate to hide, far from the shark with his jaws open wide. Hello, said the squid, what's going on here? What's all this fussing? What is there to fear? Help, cried the fish. We're afraid of the shark. The big greeny shark, he lives down in the dark. He's coming to eat us. He's coming right now. How can we keep him away? Tell us how. There's the squid. Pretty cool. I see, frowned the squid. So the shark thinks it's clever to push you around because he's bigger than you. Well, I've got a plan. We'll make sure he never swims this way again. Now here's what we'll do. So, along swam the shark and he peered all around with his mean, beady eyes. But no fish could be found. That's funny, he grumbled. Where have they all gone? They can't have all vanished like that. Everyone. And then, in the distance, he saw a dim shape. Ah, thought the shark. This small fish won't escape. But the closer the fish got, the bigger it grew, and it grew and it grew into something he knew, the shadowy head and the shadowy tail, and the gigantic wide open jaws of a whale. Hey shark, boomed the whale, come right here little fish. I'm peckish, you're small, but 